And as you can tell, we, we shrunk in number from this morning, but that's okay. There's, we, we still have the minds. The great minds are still in this room, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. So guys, listen, we are going into the second book of Ezra, and you're going to be astounded by this book. It is totally amazing. But before we hit that, I'm going to take us on a little bitty tiny, I like the way Charles said it, a nugget trail. We're going to go nugget hunting. And um, the reason I, I'm taking us in that direction is, guys, I want you to understand that the tribe of Yehuda is being blamed for a, a lot of things. In fact, I want to share with you something. Um, Y'all may have already heard this, and maybe you haven't, but there was a Tur Turkish MP, and he was talking before their parliament, and I want, I want you to see if what he, I, I'm going to read this straight out of the, the news broadcast for you. Uh, Turkish lawmaker dies after collapsing during the speech, blasting Israel. Turkish lawmaker dies after collapsing during the speech. Oh, and it doesn't have a speech, but he has a sign up there. It says, kill Israel, kill Israel. Um, after he spoke and raved for 20 minutes, he collapsed with a heart attack. They rushed him to the ER and he died two days later. Okay. Genesis. 12, 13. Was it 12, 13 or 12, 3? 12, 3. Okay. And I shall bless those who bless you and curse him who curses you. And you, all the clans of the earth, shall be blessed. Who is he speaking to? Israel. Everyone. The son of Heartland. Is he speaking to Israel or is he speaking to Abraham? Oh, Abraham. Okay. So he's speaking to Abraham. He's speaking to the seed of Abraham. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Can't get much uh, straighter than that. Charles, you've got Genesis uh, 24, 9 and 27, 29. 24, 9. And the servant put his hand over the side of Abraham, his master, and he swore by an oath to him on account of his seed. <clears> hmm. <throat> Twenty-four nine, right? Uh, that's what I had. How about twenty-seven twenty-nine? Oh, that was supposed to be numbers. Um, no wonder. Great, we'll pull that one up. Can you do Genesis twenty-seven twenty-nine? And let nations be slaves to you, and let rulers do obedience to you, and you become master of your brother, and the sons of your father. Will do obsidence to you. The one cursing you will be cursed, and the one blessing you will be for a blessing. Abba is not messing or mincing <coughs> words here. He's being very straightforward. Okay, Numbers. Numbers 24 9 says, He bowed down, he, he lay down like a lion, and like a lion, who would rouse him? Blessed is he who blesses you, and cursed is he who curses you. Who is a lion? Yehuda. Yehuda. What was Yehuda charged with? He was charged. Let's look at his blessing real quick. It's in Genesis. Forty-nine. Yes, sir. Nine through ten. <laughs> Do you have it memorized as well? Yeah, I was to read it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason I know. Yehuda is a lion's cub. From the prey you have gone up, my son. He bowed down, he crouched like a lion, and like a lion, who does rouse him? The scepter shall not turn aside from Yehuda, nor an inscriber. That, that is a lawgiver. So the scepter doesn't turn aside from him, and he will forever be the lawgiver. Um, nor an inscriber from between his feet. So he will give birth to more inscribers until Shiloh comes and to him is the obedience of the peoples. The tribe of Yehuda was charged with leading us, guiding us, teaching us the Torah. Did they? They hid it from us. They built a fence around it. They changed his name so we couldn't even find it. Us Gentiles, us who were Gentiles, who are no longer Gentiles, but we choose to be Israel, because that's who his covenant's with. His covenant's not with Gentiles. I, I haven't found anywhere 
Not not even in that place where they where they're under the new covenant in Jeremiah thirty one thirty one. Sorry, but there's no Gentiles there, guys. If you're a Gentile now, you need to change your name. You need to change your way, and you need to choose to follow Abba Yah. Okay. So we see here what he's supposed to be doing. We see here that he, everyone who blesses him is blessed. If you're cursing him, you are cursed. This is in Yah's hands. It is not in ours. We do not have his mind. We do not have his comprehension. And so I'm going to read to you from Romans 11. I love Shaul's writings. But Romans 11 is going to be quite eye-opening for most people. Okay, I say then, has Elohim rejected his people? Paul is going to argue as a rabbi argued. You're going to hear a typical rabbinical argument, because this is how he was taught. Though he was a tribe of Benjamin. He said, I say then, has Elohim rejected his people? Let it not be. Heaven forbid. This is what he would say when he's like, you got to be kidding. For I also am of Yasharel, of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Elohim has not rejected his people whom he knew beforehand. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Eliyahu? How he pleads with Elohim against Yasharel, saying, Yahweh, they have killed your prophets. They've overthrown your slaughter places, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. Who is seeking his life? The, the false prophets. And, and Jezebel. Yes. Jezebel was coming after him, wasn't she? He said, but what does the answer of Elohim say to him? He said, I have, exactly what Charles said earlier, I have left for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Baal. Do y'all know what another word for Baal is? Lord. What? Lord. Isn't that what they... Wait. Wait, just a minute. Didn't the Jews replace the name Yahweh with the word Lord? They replaced our Father's name with Baal? Does he not say somewhere in Scripture? And Charles, I bet you know where it, where it is. He said, I will not I will from now on not be known as Baal to you. I will be known as your husband. Where is it? Jeremiah. Don't call me Baal. And listen, not only he, but Yahushua himself says, Why, oh, you call me Lord, Lord. Did we not prophesy in your name? What does he tell these rascals? He says, get away from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. They prophesied in his name. They don't even know his name. They're prophesying in the name of Jesus. They're doing miracles in the name of Jesus. Who are they doing miracles for, Baal? They're calling him Lord, Lord. Hasatan. Hasatan. So, so this is a wake-up call for all you live streamers. I'm not trying to say anything bad about anyone. But wake up. Do your research. And oh my goodness, still shout out. You know, we don't answer phone calls. But what does the answer of Elohim say? Oh, he's, I've already read that. So there's a remnant left. So therefore, also, at this present time, a remnant, according to the choice of favor, has come to be. A remnant then, this was 2,000 years ago, and he has a remnant today. And I'm looking out here, and you're part of that remnant. We've got part of the remnant listening live stream. There is always a remnant. And I promise you, there is a remnant in, Yah in Yehuda. He's got a remnant there. He has not let his people go astray. And if by favor it is no longer of works, otherwise, favor is no longer favor. And if, if it is of works, it is no longer favor. Otherwise, work is no longer work. What then? Here we go. We're a rabbi, right? <laughs> Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the chosen did obtain it. Would you read Matthew twenty two fourteen? 14? Yes, ma'am. But the chosen did obtain it, and the rest were hardened. Y'all hear this all the time. People's hearts are hardened. We talk to them. I've seen people's eyes roll back in their head when I say, have you ever read the Torah? Or they say, what do you do? I'm Torah observant. Their eyes roll back. It's like <laughs> hardening of the heart. What else could it be? Possession? Are they the same thing? What does Matthew twenty-two fourteen 14 say? Matthew twenty two fourteen 14 says, For many are called, but few are chosen. 
He calls everyone. Who, who does he want? Does, does Abba Yahweh want anyone to die? No. And I'm talking about the eternal death. No one. He said he wants for everyone to be saved, to be healed, to be saved, and to be in the kingdom. But all are called, not all hear, not all have ears to hear. They have stopped their ears up. So not all answer that call. That's why there's such a tiny remnant. It, as it has been written, Yahweh has given them a spirit of deep sleep, eyes and ears not to hear until this day. Eyes not to see and ears not to hear until this day. David also says, let their table become a snare for a trap and for a stumbling block and a recompense to them. I'm going to tell you who the snare is. Yeshua, Yahusha is the snare. He's the snare. He's the snare for the tribe of Yehuda, or those, whatever they, whatever we're, we're talking about. He's also a snare for the Christians. This, it's a, he's the same stumbling block. Both are stumbling over the same stumbling block. They're stumbling over, and they're not even following Torah. They're stumbling over the Talmud. Charles, I like the way you said that. You got the right hand of the Torah and the left hand of the Talmud. And the Talmud is Babylonian. This came from Babylon. They didn't have the Talmud before they went to Babylon into captivity. What did they have when they came back? They had the Talmud. It to makes t total sense. So, so th that is their stumbling block. Our, our Christians, they think all they have to do is believe that Jesus came, he died for our sins, and that's it. Uh, that's it. They, they pray a special prayer, and boom, they are going to be saved. They don't have to walk the walk. They can go live life like they were living it before, doing whatever they were doing in a sinful nature before, worshiping whatever they were worshiping. But they walked the aisle, and they took the prayer, and they said the words. Brothers and sisters, you're not saved. Don't think, and there's not a rapture. There is a rapture, but you don't want to be part of it, right? Right. The, uh, the, 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 the wheat and the tares are going to grow up together. They're going to gather the tares, and the tares will be cast into the fire. You don't want to be part of that rapture, I promise you. You want to be left and taken into a storehouse. Okay, for a snare and for a trap. Okay, 10, let their eyes be darkened not to see and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Let it not be. <laughs> Let it not be. But by their fall, deliverance has come to the nations to provoke them to jealousy. Guys, we were the nations. We have chosen to follow Yahusha and Yahweh and be obedient and Torah observant to all of his commands. We fall. We stumble. We're going to. As Paul says, we're still stuck in this body. Stuck in this body. As long as we're in this body, we're going to have issues. Okay, by their fall, deliverance has come to the nations. By the fall of the tribe of Yehuda, this is who he's talking to, the tribe of Yehuda, and he's also talking to the house of Israel. There's two. By their fall, deliverance has come to the nations, and these nations who are following Yah are provoking these people to jealousy. They don't understand why we're following the festivals. Why are these Gentiles following the festivals? And if you even listen to Israelite preachers or the rabbis or whatever they are, they say, oh, only the tribe of Yehuda is supposed to be following Jews. Only the Jews are supposed to be following. First of all, there's no such word as a Jew. Back in the year 00, zero they were called Yahs. They were named after Yah's name. Yahshua Rao was named after Yah's name. It's not, they're not, there was no word Jew. There was no J. Hello, wake up. No J's. There were no J's until the 1500s. How would you call him a Jew? And does Jew sound like Yah? Good answer. I was afraid you were going to give me the wrong one. I was like, oh, say no. And if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for the nations, how much more their completeness? For I speak to you, the nations, and as much as I am an emissary to the nations, I esteem my service. If somehow I might provoke to jealousy those who are of my flesh and say, some, save some of them. For if they are casting away, if, sorry, for if their casting away is a restoration of favor to the world, what is their acceptance but life from the dead? 
This is beautiful. The Jews, the tribe of Yehuda has been blinded for the sake of the Gentiles so that you can be brought in, so that you can be ushered in into covenant with Yah. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if the first fruit is set apart, the lump is also, and if the root is set apart, so are the branches. And if some of the branches were broken off, and you, being a wild olive tree, have been grafted in among them and came to share the root and fatness of the olive tree, do not boast against the branches. And if you boast, remember, you do not bear the root, but the root bears you. Um, I'm going to see if I need to read the rest of it, because we really, I'm, I'm going to start back down in verse 25 for i do not wish you to be ignorant of this secret brothers lest you should be wise in your own estimation that hardening in part has come over yasha rao what does the next few words say until the completeness of the nations have come in until the completeness of the nations has come in they're blinded until yah jah has awakened the house of israel the nations are the house of Israel. You guys more than likely are part Israelite. I don't know how much you've chosen to be Israel, but I'm, I would be willing to say, yes, sir. So Paul's giving us a metaphor <coughs> that is rooted in uh, Jeremiah, and I believe also the Psalms, because Jeremiah refers to the olive tree as Israel, and David in the Psalm refers, no, Isaiah, refers to uh, Yahushua as the root. He is a root, yes. So uh, another uh, visual metaphor in regards to Romans 11 is Yahushua is the ark. Oh. Only those who get in the ark hmm. are saved. Those who have hardened themselves are like Lot's wife. They can't make it onto the ark because mm -mm. it's by their own choice. Mm -hmm. And if I make it on the ark and I start boasting and laughing at 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 the ones who are, are, are hardened on the, fo on the on the ground, I can fall off the ark <laughs> because I, I've gotten so top heavy. I'm not I'm not good for for anything. That is true. That is true. So that is a good the analogy. Ark, as you who should be the ark, the another metaphor to help understand what was about. Yeah. That is that is really cool. So the main thing I want you to see though is that the tribe of Yehuda is blinded for the sake <laughs> of the Gentiles. Okay, so don't point fingers. Don't curse the tribe of Yehuda. Don't call. I know that Yehuda, Yehusha called. The, he said, "Those of you who claim to be of of the tribe of Yehuda, but you are not. There are many in that city that are not from the tribe of Yehuda. It's not for us to pick through them. It's not for us to judge. It's not for us to condemn them. It's not our job. You." And I were not set up as judge. Yahusha is. Even Yahweh said, I, I turn all judgment over to the Son, and he will judge us on the last day. So this tribe of Yehuda, don't curse them. What, what did we read earlier? I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. We have to be very careful with what comes out of our mouth that we don't set ourselves up for a cursing. Okay, that is the main thing I wanted to hit with this. I have a verse for you. Do it. Sirach 5.13. I love Sirach. Um, it says, honor and shame is in the talk, and the tongue of man is his fault. Honor and shame is in what? The talk, what we speak. Every word that comes out of your mouth, you're either honoring or you're shaming. God's honor. Honor. Honor your father and mother. Are they the best in the world? Maybe not. They may be the worst in the world, but they brought you into this world. So you don't get to badmouth them. You honor your father and your mother. And that's a hard thing to do for a lot of people. A very hard thing. There's been abandonment. There's been abuse. There's been neglect. Very hard. Once you get past the place of being angry, and you can bless them and let them go and put them in. Who's, who's in charge of them? Yeah. Yahweh. It's not you. You're not in charge of your parents. Give them over to him and let him heal them up. You're not going to do it. They'll watch you. If they're still around, they can watch you as you grow, but you're not going to heal them. And you continue to pray. Okay. There. Done. Said. And I like that. The ark. 
Yahusha is the ark. Yeah. Very good. That really was. Okay, now, are y'all ready for Ezra? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we're going to be talking about the 144,000 today. You know, this is what is really cool about the second book of Ezra. It was included in the King James 1611 Bible. It was also included in the 1700 Geneva Bible before they were removed. And so all, all these books are coming to a light. Again, we're also, excuse me, too much really good food today. We're also going to be hitting uh, the book of Enoch um, just a little bit. And uh, we're going to be back and forth in, of course, the Scriptures Bible. So let's do it. Do we have anybody? Hmm. Oh, she said, oh, Grant. I know, I'm stuck with him. Oh. <laughs> He's that Val? This is Val. She oh. said, oh, look how tall he is. Wait, he's slumping. He's taller than me Sit now, up. Val. Look, I mean, okay, so let me go right here. See, look, he's like, he's six foot. oh, <laughs> <laughs> that made me feel good. That made me feel tall. Always made me tall. Right? I was saying that earlier. <laughs> okay, two, one. Thus says Yahweh, I brought this people out of bondage, and I have I gave them my commandments. Y'all don't have the book of, of um, you've got it in the, have it in okay, this, oh, you've got it in the Septuagint. Okay, perfect. And you've got the book of uh, the Sefer. Okay, good, good. Okay, I was just making sure. I was like, we may can find something else too, but y'all got it. Okay. And I gave them my commandments by men servants, the prophets, whom they would not hear, but despise my counsels. What did we just hear? They have ears not to hear, eyes not to see. The mother that bore them says unto to them, Go your way, ye children, for I am a widow and forsaken. And we're talking about literally that the house of Yasha, of Jerusalem. You know, Jerusalem is called the mother here. <sighs> Three, I brought you up with gladness. I'm, I'm going to get you to look here. Yes, You're going to be pulling these up as we go through, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you read my writing? I don't know that one. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Revelation 8, 18, 6 through 8. I brought you up with gladness, but with sorrow and heaviness have I lost you. For ye have sinned before Yahweh Elohim, and done that thing that is evil before him. What is evil before Yah? Anything, Anything against the Lord. Anything against Torah is evil. And we get that from Deuteronomy 17. He says, anything that is against Torah is evil. But what shall I now do unto you? I am a widow and forsaken. Go your way, O my children, and ask mercy of Yahweh. Um, Revelations 18, 6 through 8 says, Render to her as she indeed did render, and repay her double according to her works, in the cup which she has mixed, mixed for her double, as much as she esteemed herself and lived riotously, so much torture and grief give to her, because in her heart she says, I sit as sovereigns, and as sovereigness, and I am not a widow, and I do not see mourning at all. Because of this, her plagues shall come in one day, death and mourning and scarcity of food, and she shall be burned up with fire, because Yahweh Elohim, who judges her, is mighty. Perfect. Okay. And we also have Isaiah 40, verse 1 through 2. Comfort, comfort my people, says your Elohim. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and cry to her that her hard service is completed, that her crookedness is pardoned, that she has received from the hand of Yahweh double for all her sins. So, guys, is that someone's phone? It is my phone? Yeah. Okay. So sorry. Okay. Y'all ready to go forward? Okay. Yes, Isaiah 49, 11 through 16. I've already read Romans 11. Deuteronomy 28, 20. Bethany. Okay, you ready? Okay. Verse 5. As for me, O Father, I call upon you for a witness over the mother of these children which would not guard my covenant. He's asking for a witness. What did Moshe tell us in Deuteronomy? 
I call today heaven and earth yes. as witnesses yes. to your obedience or disobedience to the covenant. So he says here, as for me, O Father, I call upon you, calling upon Yah for a witness over the mother of these children, which would not guard my covenant, that you bring them to confusion and their mother to a spoil, that there may be no offspring of them. Bethany. Deuteronomy 28, 20 says, Yahuwah sends on you the curse, the confusion, and the rebuke in all that you set your hand to do. 